day to Mary, as we say all together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 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 It lauds God for his own sake and give, gives him glory. Quite beyond what he does, but simply because he is. We praise God because he is. Because he is God. Because he is. That's why we praise him. We also praise him because he is good to us, right? Because when he's good to us, you know, you can say, oh, thank you, Jesus. But the primary reason why we praise God is because he is God. Because that, that would be the order of creation. That's the order, the order, you know, you have God, then you have creation, right? <clears throat> if you break that order, then everything falls apart, which is, explains a lot of the things that are going on in the world right now, right? You guys know all about that. You break the order, and you break, literally you break humanity, you break creation. It distorts everything, right? So, we praise him because he is, right? Jesus said, I am. In, in the Old Testament, God said, I am. That meant, have you guys ever thought about that phrase? I mean, isn't that just awesome? God doesn't have to say, yeah, my name is something, or I am this guy, or I created, or like, when he said who he was, he just said, I am. That's like sovereign right there. That's just <laughs> top of the line. Right. Nothing tops that, you know, I am. I, and, and then Jesus says, I was before Abraham in the scriptures, in, in the New Testament. So God, God was before time even began. Right? So it's important to, to know, that, that to be aware of who God is so that we can praise Him properly, but that also that we can live our lives properly. And, and that's what praise and worship is. Praise, praise and, and worship is something that we just don't do just in church, but we do as a lifestyle. It shares in the blessed happiness of the pure of heart who love God in faith before seeing Him in glory. By praise, the Spirit is joined to our spirits to bear witness that we are children of God, testifying to the only Son in whom we are adopted and by whom we glorify the Father. So, basically, through Jesus we glorify the Father, but through the Holy Spirit, by, praise, the, by praising God, the Holy Spirit is joined to our spirit and it brings up this praise, right? This, it, it joins us to God and that's what allows us to experience being children of God. A lot of times in praise and worship, people are going to cry. People are going to experience something. And, and a lot of the times they experience just being a child, being loved, being, receiving the mercy, something I'm, I'm sure probably most of you in here have experienced this before, where you are you're, you get lost in praise, you get lost in a prayer, and and you experience by the Holy Spirit that 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 sonship, you know, that being a child relationship to God. And this is in the Catholic the the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It is it's quite amazing how uh, a lot of Catholics don't read it, right? But I, I've seen a lot of Catholics start reading the Catholic, the Catechism, and they, they just fall in love with it. Because it's pretty sweet. Especially if you look up a topic, it might be even easier to manage than the Bible, because you can look up a topic that you're interested in. Like, I'm sure it's all of you, after you go home tonight, you're going to look up the power, the, the, the part that talks about praise. There's a part in there, there's a, at least a full page that talks about praise. It's, it's super cool. So in, in, in B says, we were created to worship. Creation was fashioned with a view to the Sabbath. The Sabbath is, you know, making the, the, the last day of the week holy, right? It's Sunday for us. Right? And therefore, for the, for the worship of God. Worship is inscribed in the order of creation, what I was just saying a little bit ago, which is found in Genesis chapter 1, 14. And it, as the rule of St. Benedict says, nothing should take 
precedence for the work of God. That is solemn worship. Which also reminds me that if you have a job, in everything you do it should be prayer. Like uh, Saint uh, Jose Maria Escriba, right? The Opus Dei they talk about sanctifying that you work with. But and, and there's so many spiritualities that can help you sanctify your work. That is praise. That is worship. So the, what you learn here and what you do in worship carries into your life, and what you do in your life carries into your worship. It, yeah, it says, this indicates the right order of human concerns. And this is from the wisdom of the, from the Benedictus. And it says here, number two, when we praise and worship God, especially at Mass, we anticipate the life of heaven. But also when we praise God outside of Mass, like in events like this, or in your room, on your car, when you have the, the music, or when you're doing your holy hour, you might be praising in your heart in silence, adoring in silence. There's different ways to adore it. But when you're doing that, you're actually joining in into the heavenly worship. You know, you're joining into the seraphim and the, the angels, the choirs of angels singing holy, holy, holy. So that's what's going to happen later on today. That's going to be a reality. This room, we're going to have angels and maybe even some saints, Mary, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and we're gonna have a big party. You know, it's gonna go down in here. We're just gonna, we're, we're just gonna. I don't know, like in terms of the spiritual realm, realm. I don't know how it's gonna play out in here. Who's gonna be where? But it's gonna go down. In here. You'll have some angels flying back and forth, and, and the Holy Spirit everywhere, and and, uh, and we're just gonna. And, and some of us are actually gonna be given the gift to be aware of this. Maybe some of you are laughing because it sounds funny. But some of you will receive the gift today of being aware of the, the, the spiritual realm. Of being aware of, uh, of, your angel, of your garden angel or another angel praising God. Uh, one of our teachers at the, at the seminary, uh, Sister Mary, she talked, she talked uh, I think last week about we need to have an awareness for, for angels. And she said that, uh, she put it a little bit rough, she's, she's a very holy woman, but she also gets to the point. She said that... That if you don't, you have never seen an angel, or you're an angel, you don't really believe in angels, because you don't have faith. That's how she laid it out. So, we need to ask for the grace to, to be aware that when we praise God, we, even in, in, in throughout the day, but mainly for now, when we praise God, the angels are going to join in. Especially if you ask them. And then the saints, whoever your patron saint is. So when we start praising later on, you can, you can say, St. Francis, come and praise with me. And you can call down all the angels and all the saints that you know. And it, it'll, you, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, number three, why is praise so important? Well, first of all, God deserves our praise. It is, it is only just that we praise Him. Right? What does that exactly mean? Why is it just? Because remember, if you distort the, the order of creation, you're, you're doing an injustice. You're, and, that, and that's kind of what sin is, right? It's distorting the reality of what God intended. And when you distort you're, and you commit an injustice, well, then you can easily see why it would be just. It, it is to, it's to do a just act to praise God. Because that's the right place. We praise Him not only out of justice, but we praise Him in love. That's super important. So we don't just praise God because because it is just, like we say in the Mass, you know, it is right and just. But we praise God because we love Him. Because He loves us first, and we, we can respond with love to God. And it's a wonderful thing. And as we do that, as we communicate in that relationship of love, the praise gets crazier and better. And you can actually begin to taste you can begin to taste the, the praise. In His great mercy, He has called us out of darkness into His own wonderful light. So this is one of the re this is a specific reason why we can praise God. His mercy. God has forgiven us. 
There's no one in this room who hasn't been forgiven. There's no one, I'm pretty sure, in this room who's never been to confession at least one time. So you've been forgiven at least one time to the sacrament of reconciliation. So we have received mercy. And that's the great reason to praise God. Has anybody, just if, if, if you want to raise your hand, has anybody here ever walked out of the confessional a little lighter? Yeah, a little bit, oh, oh man, that was good. I'm glad I told the priest what I was afraid to tell him for. I'm, I'm glad I get that out. I'm glad I can I could receive some forgiveness. And when you walk out and you're you're a liar, that's the perfect moment to praise God and to thank Him for His mercy. Not just because He deserves it, but because at that moment you're experiencing it. And you you, you need to be able to yield to the promptings of the Holy Spirit in that spot and, and, and say, Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you're great, you're a great mercy, Lord. You, you, oh, you're so good. So that, that's an example of how mercy turns into praise. And there's a little quote here from uh, for from Saint Ephraim. And this quote you can read you can uh, read later if you like, but it pretty much should address uh, that we praise God regardless. Uh, we we are commanded to praise God. And and, and this is not just a. Uh, a, a, a thing that priests say or that we say because you know we like praise and worship but this is something that if you're a believer if you're a Christian then you should by that definition most likely believe in the Bible right? and then if you do believe in the Bible then you'll find in the Bible almost everywhere in, instances of exhortation a command to praise God and you can see here on B. Sing to the Lord, all the world. Worship the Lord with joy. Come before Him with song. Psalm 100. And if you keep going down, there's 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 a bunch of different examples of, of just the different scriptures that invite us, encourage us to praise God. And like St. Paul says, that we should pray, we should pray always. In that we should uh, always pray with thanksgiving, with praise. And he even exhorts us to, to pray with songs, inspired songs from the heart. See, praise is the most appropriate expression of our relationship with God. In heaven, praise is the principal activity of the angels and the saints before the throne of God. So it's kind of like that image I was sharing a little bit ago about all the angels, right? All the angels and the saints praising God in heaven, which is something that's going to occur today. God doesn't need our praise. Rather, we need to praise God. Praise puts us in the right posture before God. Expressive praise is our response to God's power, majesty, and love, and many other great things that come from God. So God doesn't need, God is not like, Sometimes people are like, well, why do we need to praise God? Like, is God like, you know, does he have like insecurity issues where he needs to be praised? No, that's not the case. That's a misunderstanding. God doesn't need our praise. But because we were created in a certain way, like St. Augustine says, you know, we will not rest until we rest in him. That kind of speaks about the order of creation, how we were created. We were made in this image and likeness. We were made in such a way that, that if we didn't have God in our lives, we, will, we would experience the lack of God in our lives. We would, we would feel the thirst and the hunger for God. And we would get, start distorting things it, because we're, we're distorting the, the order of creation. Uh, so we do it rather, we praise God rather because we need it because it helps us figure out who He is. Because as we praise God, He reveals Himself. He begins to reveal himself in a deeper way. And we need it because it helps us to know who we are. So as we praise God, we find out who he is. And as we praise God, we discover more and more deeper and deeper who we are. That's, that's, that's a wonderful thing about praise and worship, about worship, about praise, about prayer. Right? Because praise and worship is a form of prayer. Right? So as we do that, 
we began to learn who we are. We, found, we find out that we are his children, that we are loved by, by the Father. And that gives us even more reason to praise. All right, so which leads to E. <clears throat> well, let's, let's go over point number two. It says, friend, could you only for a moment fix your mind on something else, not on something, not yourself, or something else rather than yourself? From C.S. Lewis talks about this. So sometimes we, we have a hard time praising God in, 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 in the reason why that is, is because we are selfish. Because we're so focused on our problems, we're so focused on ourselves, that we can, it's very hard for us to get out of that, to be able to praise God. And a good way to break that, to break that chain, to break that thinking, this thinking, thinking, is to praise God for the problems, to thank God for the trials. And that gets them out of the way, so that you can move in, right? I, I remember a quote that a lot of people would put on Facebook, like, uh, don't tell God how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big your God is. Right? That's a pretty cool uh, little quote. I don't know. I don't think I don't think a saint came up with that one, but people just put it on a, one of those memes, you know. And but but it speaks a lot of truth. It speaks a lot of truth. So E, praise leads to deeper union with God. That's another one of those fruits of, of praise. In in this part, you see it says. I feel of praise. This is something that I really want to talk about that I really want everybody to understand. And if you have any questions about this, then you can ask me because this is, is super important for the rest of the day because you'll be able to see the, the cycle of praise happening as we praise together and how we go through the cycles individually and also as a, as a whole, as a community. It's going to be like amazing. And as the cycle goes, it can go up and get better and stronger and crazier and sweeter and, and you know, or it can go the other way and shut, shut off and, and we go home. Right? But that's not gonna happen. We're gonna be here for the rest of our life. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, then the first part of the cycle, friends, you can see there's a couple of like uh, arrows pointing it, and then there's also the the same steps down with a little bit of explanation. So we begin with praise, right? Uh, and simply praise being. I praise you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. Thank you, God. And then from, from that praising God moment, which can last a few minutes or a few moments, sometimes you can go almost right away into worship. It just depends. You know, no, None of these things have like, oh, yeah, five minutes here, five minutes here, five minutes here. No, it, it's all the, the Spirit is the one who's going to have to do that. And, and, and then our openness to the Spirit uh, involves this, right? So the first part is praise. It says here, like, fasting praises in empty. We empty ourselves. How can the living word take root in a heart that is already full? That's the reason why you want to empty yourself. Right? You want to, in the first part of this cycle of praise, that's where you want to turn in everything to God. So if you have, you're struggling with something or something is distracting you, that's the first stage where you want to surrender everything, everything, all the distractions and everything that might be bothering you and everything that might be coming to mind and even your family, even the good things, not just bad things, but even the good things. You might want to. Turn them over to him. Because the Lord says, turn over all your cares to me, right? Like, he will take care of us. So we can definitely with confidence approach his, his throne and turn everything to him. So that's our first step. And it says here, there needs to be an emptying so that there's room for God. When we praise God, he promises to be present. For he dwells in the praises of his people. This is a pretty important uh, quote from Psalm 22 which says that God dwells in the praises of his people. So when we praise God today here, we're gonna have we're gonna experience the presence of the presence of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's gonna come down, right? We're gonna experience the presence of the heavenly worship. Okay. We're also gonna experience the presence of God as he dwells in the praises of his people. We're also going to experience the, pray, the, the presence of Jesus here spiritually because he's, he's with us. We're also going to experience the presence of God in us because we're his temples of the Holy Spirit. We're, so you, you get what I'm saying? Like there's so many, there's the presence of God is going gonna, is gonna to come 
and it's going to be very present, very experientially, and very tangible today. You'll be able to, I hope, to experience that presence, that amazing, wonderful, transforming, powerful. <laughs> okay, so from praise, you move into worship. Worship is it's a, it's, it's a little bit, I guess you could describe it a little bit more intimate. So once you go from praising, you can go into worship, more like adoration, right? And it says here, our encounter with God in praise leads us to a response of worship where we can experience intimacy with God who is close to us, as St. James, James says in the scriptures. You draw close to God and he will draw near to you. So that's worship. Worship is where we, so we start by praising God and thanking him and yelling out his name and, and doing all this and, and move, removing distractions and turning over to him everything that might be there in our hearts. And then from there we start actually encountering him. And as we encounter him, that's when you move in into worship. And when you move into worship, then you go to the next part after that, which is listen. So after you kind of pour out your heart to God in worship, we, we kind of become more attentive to his still small voice speaking to us, heart to heart. And this is, sometimes this is a still voice, sometimes it's a little bit stronger of my experience. Most of the time it is going to be a still voice. But in, in, in times where we praise in community, we might experience a stronger, a stronger voice or a stronger sense. Then from that, you move into revelation. So after you listen, if you listen, then you get a word, right? You get, if you listen to someone, then you, you receive what is being said to you. So revelation is God's word, God, God, God's word to us, enlightens our mind with truth, conforms our will to His, and transforms us inwardly to His grace by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, God speaks to us, speaks to us a word of truth of who He is, who we are, how He loves us, and you know, it, it can entail many different things, but it's basically God speaking to you, and you are allowing yourself to hear that what he's telling you, what he's saying. And then from that revelation comes one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Freedom and joy, it says here, for example. The inner transformation worked by God through his revelation brings us the fruits of the Spirit. This leads us to an even greater awe and love for God and inflames our desire to praise him all the more. And this is where you can see that the the cycle gets going, right? So basically, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then you start, oh, thank you, God. You know, oh, you're so good. And then you listen. And when you listen, you receive this revelation. I love you, my son. And then from this revelation, then you're like, thank you, God, because you love me. Wow, you're speaking to me. I can feel your voice. And so it just kicks off. It just gets going, right? That's why it's a cycle. And it can go down if we will it. But it can definitely go up. So to, today, I, 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 my, uh, I think that we'll have maybe three or four of these cycles uh, as a whole. Well, we're going, we'll experience something. And then that will give us even more reason to praise God. We'll react to that fruit of the Holy Spirit, wherever it's gentleness or peace or a word from the Lord. We open up the scripture and we get like this word speaking to you. And you're like, oh man, God is talking to me right now. This is amazing. Thank you, Jesus. And then you have a more, even more reason to praise when you get started, you get going. So that's what's going to happen today, right? In our, in our time of praise. That's what we expect. It's just this crazy, just, you know, firecracker of cycles. Just <laughs> like, like imagine, I don't know if you guys have ever been to like Mexico or, or I don't know if they do this in like the U.S., but sometimes when they celebrate like uh, Mary's Day, or, you know, the 12th of December, like, our Lady of Guadalupe, if they celebrate that or another day or even Independence Day, they'll put like this huge like firework castles. They'll build this huge ridiculous thing. To, it's, it's crazy. With all kinds of fireworks. And one of these fireworks is like this big, it, it can be this huge thing that spins. And, and, and just with the fireworks going, it just, and, and it just, 
Well, it's, it's, it's amazing, but it's crazy. Like, who came up with that, right? But, okay, so that's what's going to happen with us today. Imagine this room. Imagine this room sustained, like the whole floor sustained by fireworks. And as we go into the cycle of praise, the fireworks are just going to kick and just flip up all the room. And then we're going to start just going, you know, going and going for it. So that's, that's what's going to happen today. Uh, all right, so that's, uh, that's that part. Uh, that's the first part. Uh, does anybody have any questions so far from what I've discussed? Or does, does this make sense? Does the cycle of grace seem clear and easy? Yes, because it needs.